Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. Now, we're gonna take this guy outside and we're gonna do a what I like to call a hover maiden. Just check the antenna there, make sure the prop isn't gonna hit that antenna like that, see? Just turn it up and out of the way a little bit. It should be fine. And, and I don't even have my FPV goggles right now. This is just a hover maiden to make sure the quad takes off and gets into the air. If you don't know how to hover line of sight, it's a good skill to learn. I don't think line of sight flying is, is absolutely essential to fly FPV, but it's not bad to at least be able to hover. I'm gonna turn my Tyrannus on. Switch and by the way, are you tired of getting these switch warnings? Let me show you how to fix that real quick. I'm gonna hit the exit key to skip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit page, or menu, and then page one time. And here in the model setup screen, I'm gonna go to where it says switch positions right here I'm gonna put all my switches in their neutral position so I'm gonna push all the other switches up except the arm switch I'm gonna put in the disarm position and then I'm gonna just hold down the enter key and now that'll set the current switch positions as the default and it'll no longer uh, yell at me when I turn when I start up so I'm gonna go ahead and plug the quad in just like I showed you a little half twist there and okay and then I'm gonna walk away and I'm not gonna walk very far away because I want you guys to be able to see what the quad does but normally I would stand a little far away because again if anything goes wrong it can flip out now to arm the quad I'm just gonna hit my arm switch and the props should begin to spin fantastic and we see the props begin to spin no motors are bound up. All of them are spinning smoothly. I want to give you a, a heads up that this is actually pretty dangerous having your arming on just a switch like this. It is real easy. You go over to pick your quad up and as you're picking it up, you haven't unplugged the battery yet and wah, you hit the arm switch and it flips out in your hand. It's real dangerous. Now, there's a thing in Betaflight that you can do called the pre-arm switch, which I haven't set up because I because I want to get you in the air and there's only so many things I want to have time to show you but a good uh, thing to do is when you disarm the quad raise the throttle raise the throttle not all the way just to like the mid position and then the quad will not arm you see how it's refusing to arm right now because if the throttles raised it won't arm and that's a nice little safety to protect you from accidentally flipping that arm switch See, you have to lower the throttle and then arm and it'll arm. As soon as you disarm, just raise the throttle slightly and now you're safe. That's your little extra safety to prevent you from accidentally taking off or hurting yourself. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the throttle, then I'm gonna arm the quad and don't take off yet. Just with the pitch and roll stick, bump the pitch and roll stick side to side and front and back and you should see the quad rock front back left right and that's just your final confirmation that everything's going correctly nothing's misconfigured your motors are all mapped correctly and so on if that all goes correctly then you're ready to hover if that if the quad suddenly 
disarms itself spontaneously, you have a problem. Your motor is going the wrong direction, your motors are mismapped. You shouldn't have that problem at this point if you've been following along, but you never know. And uh, that's a check I do on every new build, though, because, um, you know, I'm not always going to be here to hold your hands. So arm, bump the throttle just a little, and everything looks good. And now we're going to raise the throttle, and congratulations. You did it. You built a quadcopter. Now it's flying, and you are ready to proceed. Now, did you see what I did there? Did you see what I did there? Get in the habit. As soon as you disarm, raise the throttle slightly. Put the throttle to center. Get in the habit. So that if you accidentally bump that switch, you'll be okay. And I'm gonna go over, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the freaking battery. I'm not gonna pick the quad up and carry it with the battery plugged in in my hands. And if for some reason you do decide you want to carry it with the battery plugged in, carry it like this so that if the motor spin up, it will fly away from you. Don't carry it like this. Hey guys, I don't know if my motors are working right. <laughs> okay.